Uh, so this is Pan. I'm a little bit new at this Brooklyn Bandstand thing, so pardon me as I get settled in a few degrees. Uh, Pan, stepping in for Took today. We're going to be playing some music live here in the studio with a special guest. And uh, then we'll play a few tracks from a lovely uh, Pan, Brooklyn Bandstand playlist curated and put together by uh, the wonderful Took. I'm going to go live on Instagram as well by playing some music. And uh, yeah. Thanks, and welcome to the show. It's Brooklyn Bandstand, don't you know? And here we have a friend of ours. Would you like to say a few words, a few bars? Hi, my name's Hamir Zawawi, and uh, thanks for having me, Pan. Oh, it is our pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, just met, but I feel like I know you. <laughs> Seriously, literally, just because we do have a few friends in common. Yeah, tell, yeah, Tell us I a little know. bit about yourself. For real. Um, so I'm from Malaysia. And um, I've been traveling around since March. Um, I was in Germany for about a month in March. And um, I was about three weeks in the UK and about three weeks in LA. And then about since June here in New York, just doing music. I was, I've been performing around and um, I've been recording here in New York. And... Um, Finished recording about three songs and uh, made it into an EP. Wow. And um, just released the EP. And um, I knew about RFB from um, Took because there we go. I actually, because in, in my time here in New York, I've been open micing so many times. Like, Oh, yes. This is so many open mics, Pan. Which is great. And yeah, we were actually uh, talking a little bit about that on my radio show, Pandemonium. Uh-huh earlier pandemonium pandemonium two to three p.m did you join an open mic as well um not i i have been a part of many open mics in my time Mm -hmm. i have even hosted uh created space for a few of my own cool um so yeah i definitely like to facilitate that and participate um and then you know also just discussing the pros and cons Mm -hmm. of open mic of an open mic and how very open it is right um that does not necessarily mean open-minded Right. And also right. it means open to certain influences or forces mm. that may not be the best yeah. for your performance. I mean, some, some open mics might have certain um, inclinations mm. that you'd have to conform to sometimes, but some are really open-minded. Have you, uh, what has your experience been with I that? I mean, um, so when I, when I went to Germany in March, um, I had two shows in Berlin organized for me beforehand but when i arrived in germany those shows actually got canceled oh dear may i ask who was you organized or not that it's relevant was uh, it like an organization or a personal thing like, it was more like a f- uh, friend who who got me a show but later on the venue got back to me and said like hey we're gonna cancel your show uh because of some it's a bit more of like this technical royalty thing which uh-huh. uh i guess the germans are just really uh, ain't all about <laughs> and um, oh just I don't know I, I but anyways yes when I arrived in Germany I was like hey uh, what do I do I've got nothing else to lose so you know what let's just do an open mic every night and I hit an open mic every night in Cologne and every time I hit an open mic I would ask the host I would go to the host and say hey um, do you have any singer songwriter shows I could join in nice and on the first night of the open mic, I got a first featured show in Cologne. And um, I rinsed and repeated the whole process. And then I got featured shows in Berlin, Leipzig, rinsed and repeated in the UK from open mics, became featured shows. I had two shows in London, one in Brighton, two in Glasgow. Wow, dude. Same thing in LA and New York. And it's just amazing how I feel open mics in terms of its pros definitely is a way for you to get into the music scene, I feel. And get exposure. I agree. No, um, totally. not, not only to possibly fans, followers, friends, collaborators, uh, but also exposure to things that might expand you in your comfort zone and right. your boundaries. No, and, yeah, true. Because, uh, I mean, I've never really thought about it before, but r- like lately, one of my performance mediums would be mm-hmm. freestyling or some people right. are calling rapping. I personally don't feel like calling it rapping. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of people that are, you know, they're, they're real MCs. They follow this flow of rap and its development over the years. Right. Big fan, you know, fans of Kanye and whatever he's brought to the table. Mm-hmm. And me, I'm just like, I just like speaking in rhyme. Right. And freely. And uh-huh. freely and just doing it. And so, like, I don't know if I could or should call it rap, whatever it is. I mm-hmm. love doing it, but that started off with me just writing. 
And then someone being like, oh, I love these words. Hmm. Can I use this in a piece? And then they performed my words and someone was like, oh my God, oh, who wrote cool. that? Oh, you, why don't you share your work? And I was just like, I mean, right. sure, why not? I've just never thought about yeah, you that. Never thought about I'm it. a writer. And then I started doing it. So I was a spoken word poet and then it evolved. And now I find myself singing and wanting to put a band together and do things. So, and most of this is because open mics. Open mics. And because it is so open, you know, you could be right. at a place where like, well, I came in wanting to do spoken word, mm -hmm. but now I just met this really cool guitarist or this person with a synth yep. and a pedal. And they want to randomly collaborate for both of us to do this mic. And like so much has happened spontaneously. That is so cool. No, the fact that, like you said, your act had evolved from just writing yes and just happened somebody took your piece and made it into a performance mm -hmm. and then now you're performing yourself yes and um, it's evolving and writing it's still writing for the people but it's like that's really cool your your expansion of you know this doing this groundwork with open mics and then having featured shows i think you know just just the fact that an open mic uh is a congregation of a lot of people or a lot of creative people in one spot just trying to make something happen right just yes. creates that environment of just like you saying, had you not met this guy who took your piece as a performance, you would not have evolved. Sure. And I mean, like I met my bass player at an open mic. There we go. And um, I met Enlo. I met Took. There we go. At an open mic. And then uh, that's how I'm here right now. Yes. At RFB. And another fun fact, I mean, when I first came to Bushwick, I was airbnb -ing. Of course. And the people I met at the Airbnb were also interesting. Yes. So it's like, you know, it's like all these random, this, this, this opportunities for random occurrences to happen. It's like this serendipitous kind of like meetings. Um, are they interesting? I mean, I'm, I met my drummer through an Airbnb. I'd like to think that, oh, yes, everything is connected, but I don't want that to be a sort of write off because I think mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with you being open yourself, right. being an open, uh, being an open microphone to, <laughs> hear and pick up on the voices and the vibes of other people and then amplify it and carry it out and whatever metaphor you want to go mm -hmm. running with on there. Um, I really like what you were bringing up about uh, meeting people in these spaces too. Earlier mm -hmm. we were talking about, have you heard of Artery? I have. Okay, of course. I have, I've actually played a few Beautiful. Artery showcases. Where, where at? In like city um, country? So when I first arrived in New York, um, so I took a train from Los Angeles to New York on um and it took three days and i arrived new york 4th of may and you know i rinsed and repeated the whole process i did in germany and uk i played open mics every day here in new york and there's so many open mics in new york oh yeah and uh um, and there's places to let you know where all these open mics are too it's like yeah. there's kind of one every night more than anywhere one. that's yeah. like two or three At least, sometimes yes and <laughs> that's what i do sometimes like back in the like back in may i did two open mics a night and uh <laughs> there are a lot of open micers who actually do this but yes. they don't really say that out like like in public but i'm like you know right. what i don't really care like i did two or three open mics sometimes no one shame night. but i know that some people uh sort of use open mic circuits as a sort of a lab to cultivate and curate their own mm -hmm. thing and fill out their own vibe i know that's often what i do mm -hmm. And uh, and then when they have something a little bit more fixed or they have a few people, they're like, hey, when you do a show, we're like, hey, come do my show because they scout at open right. mics or whatever. They do. Yeah. And they go from there. So some people don't want to be known for their open mic scene because right. to them it's like, oh, that's, I don't know. It's like reality versus Instagram. Right. right. <laughs> in yeah. terms yeah. of like with Instagram, yeah. well, that may be you, but it's also yeah. you, how it's, you Instagram looks present. like a rock star, but like in reality. Yeah, yeah. how I you mean, want to be seen yeah. right on the scene. And I mean, I was open micing at a... Uh, Santos Ann on a Sunday night, right? This place in Brooklyn. And I met this guy named Elijah Bridges. Okay. And after that open mic, uh, I, I, I asked Elijah, hey, dude, have you got any singer songwriter shows I could join in? He's like, oh, not in the next two weeks because you're only going to be for two weeks, right? Homie? I'm like, yeah. But you know who has a show? Taylor Place mm. is going to organize a show with these guys called Audrey. Nice. And that's how I got my first Audrey showcase. That's cool. And um, back in May, back in May. Wow. Well, that's perfect. We were we were just talking to a friend of mine, Chris Carr, mm -hmm. um, and about Audrey and facilitating shows. You know, and why mm -hmm. Audrey is a cool thing, um, or you know, what the pros and cons of it yeah. being involved in it are. Um, and so today, later, we're having a little bit of a show and a discussion mm -hmm. at Chris's place, and uh, we're like partaking. We've we've done a couple of the Artery shows as well. Cool. Met one of the co-creators, Vlad. I Vlad, guess. Yeah, yeah, Vlad's yeah. amazing. I very, love him. Very chill dude. I was like, <laughs> I didn't realize 
who he was you know it was like right. i see him at events like hey what's up dude hey what's up dude and then yeah actually like mixed him up with another friend of mine and found out right. he was like this creator i was like oh you're the artery dude i was like oh shit like, oh okay well, in that case <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, like, I want to perform at your shows. And I'm mm. like, oh, wait, I have been performing at your shows. Okay, got you. Like, didn't see the connection there. Um, so, yeah, good stuff, Artery and open mics. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to, like, do you want to go ahead and, like, open up with an acoustic? Do you need a moment? Because I can play a little something um, from I our could, playlist. I could, I could grab my guitar up. and straight away so let's, perform. Let's just play a little music while we're uh, here on the device. And uh, got a guitar, so we're doing a little acoustic stuff. I actually don't know what on this acoustic or what on this playlist that Dear Took has curated. Was the playlist by Took? It is. Um, but so I, even when I was talking to Vlad, right, he was mentioning like um, how he came up with Audrey and the fact that because he was mentioning um, how couch surfing, right? Has, One of my favorite pastimes has like basically um, encouraged or allowed cultural exchange from the east to the west because the currency is so low in in like Asian countries, right? Mm. So when they get to travel to Western countries for free, the cultural exchange happens. And he said he was inspired by that, and that's how. He came around with uh, Audrey as an opportunity for people to just, you know, come together and perform and be able to, like, um, collaborate. Yes. I, I love the way that sounds. We're warming. And, and that's a great point because, I mean, I've, I've done my fair share of couch surfing, still resurfing, resurfacing into my couch surfing mode <laughs> um, since June. Uh, oh, nice. Of this year, and like, which hasn't been that long, but that also feels like the longest time of me being like, oh, I don't have my own space. And was ironic because I was in a space where I was like talking to Chris, I was like, Yo, I want to start hosting shows here. Mm -hmm. We have a backyard, this <laughs> is gonna be dope. Or like, do everything here. And then wasn't able to send the lease because didn't have other people to oh, sign with. Oh, and it just right. all love fell apart. But I was like, Doesn't mean we can't still participate and do this stuff. And Brooklyn's like the best place because so many backyards. Yes, so many backyards that are underused. And I'm I like, agree. Let me use your backyard for a show. Which, you know, I guess that's what Artery's good for. Um, well, you're tuning up. Let me see if I can position this mic. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, I'm going to play a song. That was Grizzly Bear with Morning Sound. Lovely little song. And um, now we're going to hear from our friend. And does this, does this song have a name? I graduated back in 2012 in a degree for uh, programming for video games. But um, I decided to do music instead. So I wrote this song in a dilemma of, you know, whether I want to choose what I want to do. Do I want to do programming or music? And um, it's called Hard School. It's Hard School. Okay. Here on Brooklyn Bandstand. Take it away. <laughs> To see his life divide At that job it seemed That he was lost and in a bar Aligned Two conflicting ways To scrutinize his heart One of mindly cries The other one of soul desire Whoa, whoa Excitedly 
Relief to slowly sway Towards his inner needs The one that he had but not preferred Surely down the line As life begins to clear I took the road hidden Between the two he plummeted through He moved out of this shrine to the wilder side of oh, the bell and so why won't the heavens send him a sign so that he'll stop his moan mindless trial? Why won't he just take a blind step? Passion diminishes together with time. Why won't he dare make the move? To run his heart Go <laughs> Nothing compares The wash Of enlightenment As he climbs over the walls of an opening night no, 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 no. He sees the light It shines through the cracks As he takes into the minds of devotion Anger, passion, hunger For him to bear what he was told The secret to his heart's goal Shiitake mushrooms. That was lovely. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. That was very lovely. That is lovely. Wow. Thank you. And uh, and that was called heart. It was called heart scold. Heart scold. Now, would that be sort of like the heart is cold, like apostrophe s, or heart scold, like you're scolding? Like like the hearts, like the the gold of the heart. <gasps> gold, not gold. Scold. Okay. Not scold. Gold. Here we so go. it's like heart scold. So like in 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 Malaysia, right where I'm from. Um, it's kind of like a play of the Malay word where it's like a, it's the, the heart's needs, the heart's gold. So if it's like, um, yeah, it's basically what the heart wants. I like that. Mm. Like the treasure that the heart the is The treasure seeking, of the heart. Sort of. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. <laughs> I like this phrase. Mm. There, there are, uh, there are a few interesting phrases that are, I feel miss mistranslated into the right. English language right. that have like a very deep meaning. Um, some Buddhist terms that talk about the treasures of the heart or right. the treasures of, you know, these different things. Um, and a lot of people, especially when you translate it into English, right. I think per, you know, which says a lot about the English as a culture and the English speaking language, it translated into material things, into right. physical gold, into gems, money, Interesting. things. And I feel like, as you were saying, the heart's gold, mm. that's, I don't know, that's more than... Right. Um, uh, I mean, I mean in, 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 in Malay, um, gold is referred to as something very uh, precious. I mean, it's, of course, it's, it's precious, but metaphorically as well, uh, in a lot of uh, Malay traditional poems, poetry, we use the word, the Malay word for gold, which is emas, um, as something that's valuable, like time is gold, like, ah. and then like everything is like gold, gold, which is something very valuable, and um, which maybe that's all that word gold really meant to begin with was at a time right. gold was really fucking valuable yeah. and needed, and so that that's gold, that's what it is. But to realize that metaphorically or literally, it can be a lot more in a different language. But mm -hmm. when it gets translated to English, it's like, oh, that's about the same word <laughs> as gold or money. So that's mm -hmm. what it means, mm -hmm. money of the heart. But um, I like that heart's gold. Heart's gold, yeah, and um. Yeah, that song um, was recorded here in New York. Um, so I, I joined a competition back in May 
right? Um, it was an open mic competition. So there we go. It's all about open mics again. All about open mic. I joined an open mic competition. And I mean, I was just curious, like, hey, what in the world is an open mic competition? And so I joined. It was organized by these guys called Recording Artist Development. And um, at the end of it, um, I won the competition. And um, part of winning it was they called me back to New York. They were saying like, hey, would you want to record uh, with us for the next two months with, with the recording artist development guys? And I was like, okay, yeah, you know what? I've got nothing else to do back in Malaysia. Let's come back to New York. So I, in May, I was here for two weeks. I went back to Malaysia for two weeks. And then I came back to New York in June and recorded the song with them for the next two months. And now it's in the EP. And um, basically, I'm trying to maximize my whole time here in New, in, in New York. Yes. Well, I still can. Jumping in on the Brooklyn Bandstand here on Radio Free yes, Brooklyn. Yes, indeed. That's a one musical, of it as well. A musical hour. Is, so just because I'm a talker, I'm a real chatterbox, so I don't want to totally eat up Brooklyn Bandstand music time. Because we all know you lovely listeners tuned in to hear music. <laughs> and the funny thing about Brooklyn Bandstand is it's, it's we say local music sometimes, we as in me. I'm like, oh, Brooklyn Bandstand's about local music, but we're really playing worldwide music. And it's the same thing, is what I mean. Is Worldwide is local. Local yeah. is worldwide. And we should all be doing this couch surfing, whether it's literally or metaphorically, uh-huh. this exchanging of creative ideas and music and sound. Um, so much can be communicated and shared through music. And I think that's something humans across multiple cultures and ethnicities can relate to, regardless of your differences, is music. Um, with that being said, is there another lovely piece you would like to share um, yeah. with these um, radio surfers? Um, I've got a so I've got a song which I so the thing about songwriters, I feel um, I, I don't think it just applies to me. I think a lot of people as well. Like whenever you have a melody, um, you record the melody, and then. Uh, in your phone, for example, right? And then you revisit the melody over many months sure. or even years. And then you realize, that, oh man, what if the melody was this way? And then you rewrite it so many times. So I had this one song that I rewrote quite a few times. But when I came to New York to record the EP, um, I realized, hey, maybe this song can be rewritten in a different way. And I rewrote it. And um, it's now also in the EP. And the song is about basically, I mean, on the overview of things, it's about nature, Mm. but metaphorically, it's basically about s- s- you as a person trying to break out mm. from um, conformity. Mm. And and what is the name of this? it have a name? So you- this is the title track of the EP. It's called Plug Out of the Machines. Okay, Plug Out of the Machines? Yeah, and people say it's like, dude, it's like wrong grammar, dude. It's supposed to be like, unplug the machines. No, I, I like I like that. In a way, it's sort of like plug into something, but something outside of the machine. So, plug out. Nah, that's cool. Like, I, you know what? Another Big ups to anyone who's speaking English as like a secondary, tertiary, whatever language. When you're speaking <laughs> so many languages, and English is one of them, I really appreciate everyone speaking it <laughs> and bringing new, no, bringing new ways of sentence structure to it. Right, uh, right. There's a friend of mine who says... Uh, tomorrow when she means yesterday and I don't know right. it's so fucking cute and like also I know what she means right. but then just the the rewording of it is just amazing so that's perfect grammar and <laughs> well, I think you know when it comes to music or anything creative anything, anything can goes. be yeah. correct yeah <laughs> all right uh, plug out the machine Take me home to where all the flowers grow Fields and plains under the sunlight's glow A breeze of air brushing against my skin Chirping birds flying into the wind Will I ever see the day Trying 
tranquil as the sea at bay. Lie upon the softest day. Will I ever have a say? Ashes all of the wounded forest trees, burning oil seeping into the leaves. Shifts the earth under my static feet. Hungry lives given to the defeat. Will I ever see the day? Tranquil as the sea at bay Lie upon the softest day Will I ever have a say? The race and poor power, you are not God. Pull out the plugs from your machines, they poison your land. See the day tranquil as the sea at bay. Lie upon the softest day. Will I ever? Have a say oh. Wow. Again. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. I really like your uh I don't know, I'm not a voice teacher or whatever vocal trills that's what i call it trill you have a very trilling quality interesting and you know you know what people usually say um you sound very theatrical on here so i was gonna say that too Mm -hmm. um it's sort of like um and this is a positive this is a good thing for me Mm because i just like this stuff theatrical but also it reminds me of like maybe that's what they mean shakespearean sort of Mm -hmm. minstrel tone like in the storytelling um aspect of whatever it is you're you're weaving mm-hmm. the visuals mm-hmm. you're weaving with your words and of 
course, maybe it's different if you're playing with a full band versus acoustic. Um, it seems yeah. more or less minstrel, like with just a guitar or you know a mandolin or something like that. It right. does seem very much like a minstrel. Right. Um, good across the board. I would love to hear this with. Is is that one of the songs you do with a full band? Um, yeah. So in fact, um, in the EP recording, it's totally different than um, how the band sounds like. Sure. And I mean that was one of the directions I was going for that. The recording and the band would sound totally different because in the in, in in songs you can spend so many hours in the studio to create such a crazy fictitious almost sound that it's almost impossible to recreate it live. Yes, unless you have some elaborate setup. Right, or unless you intentionally just structured the song a certain way so that exactly it's and the same live as it is recorded. But um, but with the band, it's totally kind of like almost psychedelic rock, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, and and you know when it's acoustic, it's um theatrical. Min- minstrel, what were we saying? Okay, that? yeah, sort of. It, uh, I don't know if that's the right word. It just mm-hmm. reminds me of. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking. What comes to mind is a movie adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing. That is so cool. And there's this singer or group of guys that are like wandering around through the party because that play has several poems or songs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sonnets that they're singing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just, you know, you have a wonderful voice. But you, there's something about that reminds me. Cool, cool. Babbling. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, um, I didn't know what to box myself in at first. I was like thinking, hey, I play kind of like alternative folk, I suppose. And then, you know, friends kept, kept coming up to me and saying like, dude, uh, your song sound like it belongs in a Tim Burton movie. Like it sounds. It, like a- oh my god, that's actually really <laughs> spot on. Whoever said that? There, I'm thinking about this. It sounds like Jack Skellington. You sound a lot like the dude who sings, who what, voices Jack Tim Skellington. Bur- okay, is that Tim Burton? I, yeah, I'm not sure. if you've okay. ever seen Nightmare Before Christmas, <laughs> I haven't. Actually. Okay, yeah. it's that's okay. It's forgivable. Mm-hmm. Um, there are many classics that I'm not familiar with in literary and liter- literature, but uh, I love movies and Tim Burton. Cool. Um, and but yeah, so when people say. That. Uh, theatrical I was like oh could be theatrical folk and yes. I've just been going around just saying theatrical folk and must you put yourself into a box I mean only for I guess you know people who really really want to know what's the box yes because I keep getting that question like Hamir so what kind of music do you play I'm like uh I guess it's like folk but it's like progressive and it's very theatrical mm. and then they're like uh okay like um like whom like I guess the closest guy I get referenced to usually is Jeff Buckley. Interesting. And I'm like, the first time I got referenced to him, I had no idea who he was. And when I listened to Jeff Buckley, I was like, holy crap, this dude actually has some vocal runs that are eerily similar. Yeah. And I had no idea who he was. Yeah. I guess that's what I mean by the trill in your voice when it, there's something very similar in the vibrato of Buckley and, and your voices. The vibrato, yeah. I feel like you remind me of some of my, uh, I used to listen to a lot as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Donovan, not many people know him. He's, he was a Scottish musician. Cool. Actually, he might still be alive. I don't want to say was. Mm. He's still with us. Um, but has very folky um, aspects, but then sings about very absurd things. Like we'll have a song about Atlantis, but we'll also have a song <laughs> about uh, intergalactic oh, stuff. For, and for like, real? It's, yeah, it's just very like flip floppy, but right. there's this really beautiful album and something like a, uh, Letter from a flower to a garden, that's, or something that's like cool. that. And then from galactic into Atlantis, and right, and then a little bit of garden. nature in between. Yeah. Um, so, so I feel like I mean, because the first song you were talking about, the heart's gold, mm-hmm. and then you were talking about uh, plugging out of the machine. So you know, this. <laughs> where else in the spectrum do you have? Do you have another song? Yeah. So you um, share with us. So so the EP has three songs and um, beautiful. So it's How just timely. nice and and like this this next song I guess um, would be. The finale of, of, of the EP. Um, it's the it's the finale of the EP, and, and it's a song about basically um, finding your own identity hmm. and not conforming to society. Almost similar to how the previous song was, but uh, this is more literal um, in the sense. Uh, the song is called "Deaf Ears," and hmm. like in the EP, and that's like another play on like. English. English, oh yes, I suppose. Of course. Well, and and but that actually is a a, a metaphor. Like people say, oh, it, it fell on deaf ears, um, which oftentimes is not even literally referring to someone who is hearing impaired, right? Or right. deaf, yeah. So yeah. ironically, and um, it's just about it's metaphorically, right? It's about people right. just not listening. And yes. um, and um, the song I had a I had a French. So like in the in the recorded version, I had 
a French cello player. Oh wow! Based in Malaysia,、um, back in December last year, we recorded it, and when I perform it live with the band, it's totally different. And when I play it live acoustic as well, it's a different vibe. And、um, but yeah, the EP version, it's 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 all, all the whole EP is all on Spotify. It's all on Bandcamp. Beautiful, and and,、uh, and is it under an artist name or it's, it's just it's your... so it's under just my name Hamir Zawawi, and it's spelled like. Uh, hammer. Yes. Instead of double M, it's double E. H A M E E R space Zawawi Z A W A W I. Perfect. And、uh, Pan will totally provide a link、uh, to your music and stuff for Brooklyn Bandstand.、Uh, we do provide a playlist of all the artists we share、uh, during the hour. So、uh, go to radiofreebrooklyn.com to find out more about that and、uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll provide some links. To your music and work, I really, I really, really like what you're doing, and、um, you, we're gonna play the last song from the new EP, your latest, your first EP. My,、uh, yeah, my first EP. I had a acoustic album ba- okay back、um, last year, but、um, this is you starting. This is your- this is me upgrading the sound. Sure. All right. Cool. And the song is called Deaf Ears. Deaf Ears. All right. Let's listen in. <laughs> To the stage to conjure my lines, and they've fallen on to death. Yes, with my head held high, I walk onto the stage to conjure my lines. They've fallen. 
Island on to death ears mm-hmm. I will not feel to go through this intention to break away Hot damn. <laughs> awesome. I think that might... Is this on? Is it loud? Yeah, I'm not hearing myself. I think that might be my favorite of the three. Cool. On the EP. Not that I, you, EP, not that you have to choose favorites, mm-hmm. but I just really like the jam of that one. Thank I you. feel like that would be something I would like to hear with a full band, for Ooh. sure. Full band and the EP version. Yeah. But the cello comes in. It's very cinematic, actually. Oh, exactly. So the cello version is on the EP. Yeah, the cello version is on the EP. The band version is very almost psychedelic, actually. Okay. But that's only live with the band so I'm, far. I'm down for that. Well, <laughs> speaking of the van, the band, mm-hmm. uh, is uh, do you have any shows coming up by chance? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing like a... So, because I'm, I'm, I'm only going to be here till December. So, like, I was... Why? and And I decided to just do an, a mini tour kind of thing and um have a show in every borough borough how, how do you pronounce that uh so it depends on where you're from to be honest uh borough borough is, is often how people say so yeah. like um third november at greenpoint gallery which is in greenpoint lovely and then um seventh november in harlem this place called shrine yeah i love the shrine congratulations that's a thank you. dope venue thank you um um and then it was supposed to be on the 2nd of November, but I just changed it to the 7th of November. Perfect. And then going to Boston, 11th of November at a place called PA's Lounge. And then coming back as like a finale to the mini tour in Manhattan, this place called The Bitter End, which is on Pleaker Street. Yes. And then I'm um, going to have one more show, just still kind of like looking for a venue. It's like a, like a finale goodbye show. Um Summer end of the month, I'll announce that soon. But like at the moment, the last show is the bitter end, 16 November. That's beautiful, mm-hmm. and I really like that that uh, concept of hopping around the boroughs because um, it's you know this is this Radio Free Brooklyn is mm-hmm. based in Brooklyn, yep. but a lot of our hosts and people live all over the boroughs. And I had a show in Long Island, but that's passed already. Okay, yeah. Well, that's cool though, yeah. and and you know I feel like it's good to represent on mm-hmm. all the places. And some people are just like, oh, Manhattan or Brooklyn. I'm like, what? It's, there's more. What about Queens? That's true, actually. Bronx. I could I couldn't get the Queen show, but um, yeah, that's next cool. Next time, next time, and you know what? I think that's a great effort to like. Well, good on you for being able to hustle and get all those different shows. Thank you. Yeah, but especially representing in the different boroughs, I think I think that's good. You're really uh, you're really seeking out uh, many listeners in many different places. I try to limiting yourself to like the Bushwick scene. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. No, for real. Uh, I feel like you know, um, coming to New York. Um, there's just so many scenes going on in such a small footprint of a city. Like, like I mean, like I was in LA for three weeks, right? I mean, there's a lot of things happening there, but it's just so spread out. But New York is just this uh, small footprint of a city, but so many things are going on. Like, you just walk one mile east, there's another scene over there. You just walk, like, one mile north, there's another scene going on in North Bushwick, South Bushwick, and then, like, just, it's pandemonium, baby. It's pandemonium. Exactly. That's another reason why I love that word. I feel, you know, that word is not to take away from Brooklyn Bandstand. <laughs> Brought to you by Radio Free Brooklyn. <laughs> Every day with music. Um, thanks for, thanks for Took for having me here because I'm really enjoying this interaction and hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I was going to say was pandemonium was really dope. 
because it's really like to me it was a metaphor of like what's going on internally in our hearts mm. our minds the crazy chaotic all these different voices that we must listen to internally externally mm -hmm. also maybe seeking clarity or a spiritual voice and conversation all the time while outwardly especially if you live in new york yep. any of these boroughs any of these little neighborhoods there's so much going on so and yet almost nothing happening sometimes. It's like so many people doing <laughs> yeah. so much whether well, then like nothing changes yeah. or everything changes. And I mean, it's, um, it's beautiful chaos. The, the last time I was in a city, this, this life was actually Berlin. And, and I, I could say like, you know, Berlin also has kind of like an interesting scene going on in, in like different areas of it. I've heard good things and people are like, yes, you must go to Berlin. And I mean, when I, when, before I, I headed out to Berlin back in March, I was so hyped up about People saying, oh, dude, EDM is so huge over there. But like, you know, when I was reaching, when I, when I was open micing over there, the singer-songwriter scene is also crazy good. Oh, my gosh. Like, like every time I would go out to an open mic and there'll be all these open micers from all over, from the UK, Spain, Italy, even from the, the United States. And like, everybody was just so fucking good. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, this was Berlin, and also similar here in New York. You know, New York and Berlin. I like the cities. Yeah, it's it's good. It's like the whole uh, well, challenging yourself. I f I feel like yeah, like you know, um, if you benchmark yourself with uh, with good people, right? That's that's healthy competition there. Yeah, and 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 I th I feel like just being surrounded by creative people just pushes you more. Like like you said, even when you went for the open mic, right? The guy took your writing, made it into a performance, and then he's like saying, "Oh, why don't you perform your own stuff?" You know, like it was actually a, a non-binary person, not not a male person, for the record. Okay. But it, not that it, not that yeah. it entirely matters, yeah. but it was a thing. Yes, yeah. the so person that, so, taking so your that work, person, and sharing, and building um, basically pushed you. Yeah, and you know, it's, all, it's just all about pushing each other. And you know, open micing here, I met crazy amounts of talented people. Henry Black. Um, um, my gosh, who else is coming to mind? Um, uh, I'm blanking out. Mitchell Murdoch. Mitchell Murdoch. Oh yeah, <laughs> Mitchell Murdoch was here as well. He did a nice um human canvas. Yes, that's uh. So they also prefer they or she mm -hmm. or her as mm -hmm. their preferred pronouns, and I think that's something we could all exercise more. Mitchell loves to do this human canvas thing. Yeah. We actually, I think you may have briefly heard us mention, we met because we were doing a radio show with our friend Chris Carr. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we were doing a radio interview with someone who was talking about nudity and polyamory, right. polyamorous right. relationships and all these things, um, which Mitchell and I both have some experience or desires to mm -hmm. practice and or live out, and we met each other. They do this thing where they lay themselves out, if you're not familiar with Mitchell and their work, um, and invites people to write uh, on on their body uh, a Whatever living canvas. And sometimes that mind. even like had to do with like scissors and cutting hair and shaving and things like that, you know, when they're when they're feeling that brave mm. or in, in that vein of creativity rather. So yeah, like so many creative people. And and you know, this this just the word preferred pr pronouns, right? Mm. I've only what are your preferred pronouns? I didn't bother to ask. I'm, I guess it's a he. Okay. And I just discovered this, the word preferred pronouns. Pronouns. Yes. When I was having, when I had my my show in, here in May, I was performing at this bar called Star Bar. And I know the place. It's as, on Star. As part of this uh, queer abstract uh, showcase. Nice. Organized by Shannon Mateski. Okay. And um, that was the first time I got exposed. That like she like came up to me when I arrived. I mean, what is your preferred pronouns? I'm like, uh, <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> They're like, they to be called a he or a she. Oh, and <laughs> right. I had no idea. And that was my first time being exposed to a QTPOC uh, sure. event. And, you know. Um, and what, what did you think of that exactly? Was that confusing or did that sort of click or make sense? Because in Malaysia, uh, is there a third gender or non-gendered word or term for people? So Malaysia is very, very um, conservative in that sense and it's uh -huh. it's almost i'd say borderline illegal oh yeah no for real and um but wow I, but to to present or identify as anything but one or the other exactly cis on the binary or if if like to be um, queer or anything i mean just 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 same-sex marriages is, is definitely a no-no and like you know because it's an islamic country 
Sure. But um, you know, I, I I grew up in a family where we're very open. My dad is an anthropologist, and you know, and I'm I've, I've just been very open. And when I got into this event at Queer Abstract, I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. Everybody just expressing themselves. That's mm. how it is, and I was so happy I was part of the event, and um, just to be a part of uh, this thing, which is totally new to me. People just being very open, and um, and I got used to it. And I, I appreciate your compassion in looking at it like that because it seems pretty basic. But so many right. people have dogma or tradition caught up, and it's like it's almost a moral issue for them. Right. Uh, whereas I'm sort of like I think it seems like a moral issue to make it a moral issue. This is about personal, right. like you said, expressing, if nothing else, you sexuality yourself, and gender yeah. is an expression of self uh, subject to change and fluidity, just like one's type of music. You know, you might, like you said, you might record the melody and that melody changes later. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that shit. Exactly. I think. But exactly. No. We're all entitled to our own personal opinions. I think that's beautiful though, that that's new for you because I do remember, recall a few years ago when I discovered such terminology hmm. and options for myself. And from my perspective, that was great for me because I felt a certain way my whole life and not literally not had language to express it. That is something that I don't think many people appreciate or understand right. that you can feel a certain way and you literally can't talk about it. You can use words that are close, but right. not quite exactly it because you live in an era and a language hmm. where there's no words to describe To that. describe it. And when there's now words to identify it, Yes, you can relate to it, and I and I think that 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 just opens up, that just make people more open to the topic. And um, yeah, no, definitely, I was it was a cool culture shock at first, and now I'm used to it. <laughs> you know what? And I think that's a beautiful example of why it is very fucking important to couch crash, to couch surf, uh -huh. to ex have exchange students, to exchange ideas, to have platforms. And organizations like Artery or just your local people who are trying to put open mics together um, to exchange music, exchange ideas, to, to I wouldn't say cross the line, but literally to transcend borders. To and melt to, the pot. To melt the pot. Yeah, I would like to melt some pot right about now <laughs> on another note. Here we are in Brooklyn Bandstand. This has been a super fun, happy, fun time with our friend. Hamir, your beautiful name. And it was funny that you said like hammer, but with two E's instead of, because when I first saw the text from Took, I was uh, like, how, how, oof, how do you I say this name? This? I was like, well, Pan, it's kind of like hammer, but not. So do like a long Hamir. I was like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I think I got this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pan. Thank you, Took, also for Thanks, calling me Took. Out. Shout out to Radio for Brooklyn, Took and Brooklyn Bandstand. If you'd like to find Hamir's music, check him out on Spotify. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been Brooklyn Bandstand. Uh, we're the dudes from Blind Melon and you're just on Radio Free Brooklyn. <laughs>